here with me today is one of the hardest workers in this profession. I had the pleasure of having him in my camp for a year. And uh, he's very simply, Jamie, by God noble, the redneck beside Jamie. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you too, boss. All right. You know, when you came to us, let's, let's, let's back up a little bit. You start with Dean Malenko, and I can't think of a better coach, a good place to start, get your, your butt handed to you occasionally. Yeah. But when you came to us, it was out of the WCW merger with, with WWE. And, uh, well, actually, you came up for a film to show to work with Shark Boy. That yes. was in 2000. 2000, was. Yes. And you were Jamie Son. Yes. And you're about as Japanese as I am uh, <laughs> African. Right? Yes. So when you came to us, you were trying you were trying to come up with another voice other than yours. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian Adams and I said, well, let's just be Jamie Noble. And, and I don't know how many times I've had Brian, is that his real voice? Is that her real? But I honestly think that, that was when you got comfortable in your own skin and just became yourself. And I, I still tell people that year you spent with us, some of the best damn matches I've ever seen in my life were in that little arena over on the Smith Drive. Thank you, thank you for the match compliment. Yeah, whenever I come up there, I just, uh, I never could kick the accent, you know, so then, like you said, we talked about it and we just go out and try to be you. And then uh, I did get comfortable, and I, you know, I wasn't trying to pretend to be something. I wasn't trying to act like somebody else. I was just uh, letting Jamie Noble be Jamie Noble, just a little bit larger than life type. So actually, it turned out to be the best thing that happened because they even now that I'm here, you know, they just let me run with the, you know, the redneck, you know, kind of character. Right. So it's it's working out real good. And then of course you got Nidia with you. Yeah. Which is a lot of young boys sitting out saying, "How's he rate that?" <laughs> Yeah, Nidia, uh, she turned out to be a pleasant surprise. You know, I'm real, real happy with her. Uh, you know, I think we make a good team. Everything's worked out real, real good for me and Nidia. I'm really glad that they, they went that route, and I'm, I'm real proud of her. I looked at her like, kind of like a, I know she was trained, you know, a tough enough deal, and down with Jimmy and Danny down in the OVW, but I kind of look at her like as my little protege, you know what I mean? Right, sure. So, uh, whenever her, I get happiness to her success now. You know, we were talking to uh, Spanky a while ago, and I'd like to uh, get on this one. Of course, you got a lot of kids out there probably watching and would like to be wrestlers. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys say, well, I, you know, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. Well, neither Spanky or Jamie Noble, except here, where it counts so much. And I, I've told people, I think, between you and Alan Funk, I got more energy in our practices. God, rest, God bless his heart. Uh, you know, th these two guys, any drills I'd run, they would run them, and they were like Laurel and Hardy doing one-liners to each other. And then if I said, let's run that drill another time, they'd be the first ones up to run it. Now, I don't know where all this energy came from, but that's what it takes to make it. And I think that's one of the reasons that the scouts started noticing you at the camps, because you were given 100% all the time. Yeah, that was uh, mine and Allen's idea, was to motivate each other and be like in a, you know, a good spirit of competition, just keep pushing, because uh, whenever our names were brought up, we wanted to really be brought up in the most positive form. Like, we worked hardest, we had the best matches, and we got the best attitude, you know, or things of that nature. We just, the hard, in our minds, the harder we worked, the better chance we'd have to be getting out of our cause. You know, at the time, we felt like that we were, uh, you know, on borrowed time, you know what I mean? Right. We got such amount of time to prove ourselves, so we just wanted to try to, you know, motivate each other and do the best we could. Well, that was a uh, sort of a precarious emotional time for all you guys because, I mean, uh, it was, you didn't know one day to the next. Are we moving up? Are we going to stay here? Are we going to, you know, and, and it's, it's, it, so you had to work through that adversity and I, I think made you, you know, if nothing else, a stronger person emotionally and, uh, of course, the, with the schedule you're keeping now, uh, emotional strength when you change the three time zones in one day and, and that sort of thing, it's not the easiest life in the world. Uh, no, it's, I mean, it's, um, it's not what people would, it's not what you think. I mean, you know, people are trying to break into the business, and, and that's a rough, you know, grueling road to have to go down. And, and, and even here, you know, like we're traveling all the time, like you know, we just got back from Europe and, and Germany and uh, Finland, and then we need to get home, you know, we come here. It's a, uh, you got to mentally be strong, and you'll be trying to get in the gym every day and try to eat right and special order your food. But, uh, you know, I travel with, you know, uh, Crispin Wine now. And, He's a real good, um, you know, uh, role model. Role model. You know, he's, you know, tries to all motivator, real positive thinking person. So, uh, you know, he kind of helps me, you know, stay straight and uh, things of that nature, and just stay motivated. Well, of course, uh, you're a family man, yes. and it's giving you a chance now. I know when you were with us, it wasn't that you, didn't, that you missed your family. They were in Tampa, and you were up here, and of course now you're living at home, and you get home more often. 
So it, it's, uh, it's, it's maybe the best of both worlds, finally. Yeah, yeah, you know, I get to go to work, and then, uh, you know, they understand that I got to go away, but at the same time, I get to be home, you know, for three, some of those four days, or at least two, you know, and whenever I'm home, we try to train on the road as hard as we can, so when we go home, we can just, you know, relax, so uh, it goes back to me and Chris, like, we make it, uh, purpose to get in the gym, you know, every time we're on the road somewhere home because he's got a family also, it's just we can relax, we time with him. It's great to get to see you know, my family, we have my boy and my wife and stuff. I bet that boy's getting bigger. Ah, uh, he's out of control, out of control. <laughs> he's something else. But of course, now that you're up here, uh, up in the nosebleed section, so there's the top of the mountain, I don't, I don't, know the, what, I don't think what a lot of guys understand until they get here is how much pressure they think, well, I'm here, now it's easy. No, it's quite the opposite. Now it's where the pressure starts because you've got to produce it tonight. You just got to be around. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to be a big fish in a little pond, but now you're a little fish in a huge pond. There's thousands of guys ready to lead you out. And, uh, yeah, and staying here is a lot harder to get. Me. Well, I don't want to say a lot. It's even. You know, you got to work just as hard to stay here as you did getting here. Absolutely. You, you can't ever let your guard down. You know, uh, on the HWA website, on the forum, they were asking fans for uh, some of their favorite moments. Uh, in, in one of the HWA and the, the match between you and Val yes. came up several times and, and for those of you who wouldn't know you know Val's quite a bit bigger about than Jamie and when they first went out to that ring you could see the look of the people's faces like they're comparing and saying oh well what's this about these guys went about 15 18 minutes yes. and before it was over everybody in that building thought Jamie was going to put Val away and Val just stole, stole the fall on him at the very end but it was a classic match mat wrestling match and I, I think that's something we were talking about with uh, Eddie Guerrero before too. There's so many kids who see the flying, they want to fly because they think it's exciting. But what they've got to understand is it all starts on the mat. It's yeah. a foundation and you got to learn there before you can get up in the air, right? Yeah, I totally agree. You, know, you got to crawl before you can walk, so to say. Because you can only fly so long or so much and you, know, you got to be able to do it all. And I, I believe that, uh, you know, the wrestle on the mat is a uh, it's more important than anything you can do there, in my opinion. Right. But uh, I think that they, they need, you need to, you need to learn your groundwork, your basics. You know, I think it's very important. That match of foul was awesome. It was one of my favorites too. Mine too. Mine yeah. too. I'll never forget it. It was a pleasure having you. And like I say, you were. I, I wish right now when some of these kids are stalled out. Where the hell's that damn Jamie Noble? <laughs> he put his foot up their rear end and kick him in the high gear. But I, but I think that's you know that's that's what they need. You've got to give 100% of heart, soul, and passion. Eddie Guerrero, we've talked to today, he said the same thing. It, it's Unless you do, you're destined to fail. Yeah, well, uh, when I come to Cincinnati, my goal was uh, to be the best wrestler in the camp. And uh, my goal was if it doesn't work out, I won't walk away wondering, boy, well, if I'd have did this or if I'd have did that. I, I, my goal was to give 100% in everything and, and trying to learn promos and trying to learn to, uh, you know, From A to Z, my goal is to do it 100%. So uh, if something you know went wrong and it didn't work out for me, I, I, I didn't want to get close to walking away, you know, complaining, making excuses, or, or wondering if I'd have did this a little harder because I, I, you know, I was gonna do the best I could. When you got to be my age, you didn't have to look back and say what if. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I don't give it all, everything you had, and if it didn't happen, it, it wasn't because you didn't try. Yes, yes. I think that's the best message we can send out to any young kids wanting to make it in this business or any other, right? You give give 100%, and you. you even if you don't make it, you can walk away and at least say, I gave it my, my best. It's your best try. You won't have to be the surgeon or, like you said, the most. You know, nobody wants a what if. You know, well, if I wouldn't have made it, I know why. I just, what, I just didn't. Right. But I did, and now I'm trying to stay here and just try to keep the same, keep my morale up, stay positive, and just keep trying to climb the ladder of success. I was telling Charlie Haas, I said, want to turn the TV on on uh, Thursday nights now. And I said, that's, that's one of my boys. <laughs> it's just, and, and you know that's I, I'm so proud for you, and, and proud to have been a little bit of maybe what helped get you there. And uh, I, I know there's nothing but good ahead for you, man. There's some great cruiserweights. I'm just waiting for the SmackDown thing where they start having just a cruiserweight division. And I know you're going to shine head and shoulders with the rest of them, my friend. Yes. God bless you. And good luck to you. Thank you very much, sir. Good to see you. My pleasure. Good seeing you, Jake.